What's up, YouTube? I'm back with another video for you guys. This is actually my second video in my CompTIA A Plus 1101 course. Uh, if you're new here, welcome to the course. This is my first time doing one of these courses. I don't know why Cat is here. Hold on a minute. I don't know what was that with that cat. Okay, so this is my real screen right here, guys. Uh, so yeah, this is the first video of the course. Uh, we're gonna start with mobile devices. So this includes laptops, uh, phones, tablets, uh, shoot, even Apple Watches. You know, it includes that as well. We're gonna kind of get into that a little bit. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. Actually, before we get started, guys, I'm gonna show you my old laptop. It's very dirty very busted up so hey no no judge no judge guys I'll show you my my old laptop that don't work anymore I had it for almost 10 years you know haven't used it in probably a year two years now but anyways here's my very old laptop <sighs> alienware laptop guys look at this beast right here look how dirty that is i don't know if y'all can see how dirty it is it has like dust and hair all over it i had to dig it out anyways let's get on with the course i'm sure everybody here knows what a laptop looks like and if you didn't know now you know laptops and mobile device hardware so as you can see at the bottom of the screen we have three motherboards here we have desktop motherboard laptop motherboard and a f motherboard for a phone. If you notice, they all look very similar. Despite the type of device, you know, laptop, phone, desktop, all devices, you know, they're, they're very similar to each other. They're all hardware. They all have this type of motherboard chipset. Even uh, devices in dishwashers, for example, cars, they all have something like this as well. Uh, every device that we have has to, you know, process things, uh, you know, it gives output, it takes input. So working with these hardware devices or, you know, the hardware in general is all going to be kind of similar depending on what it is. But the hardware itself, the motherboard and some, some pieces here and there is going to be similar to each other. So laptops... As you see, you know what a desktop looks like. Uh, if you don't know what a desktop looks like, I put one on the screen. But you know, desktops, you know, they they're pretty big. You don't have to carry it around. They could be big, no problem. Laptops, on the other hand, are meant to be mobile. We want to carry our laptops with us in our briefcase, looking all legit. <laughs> so. In that case, you know, they're much smaller than desktops. You know, they have smaller parts. Uh, they have, you know, smaller, a smaller size, smaller form factor. Uh, but they all perform the same functions. So the same thing I do on my desktop here, I could do on my laptop. Granted, my laptop is not the one I just showed you, and it works. Uh, because of this, uh, because, you know, laptops are built to be carried around and they can be pretty small, uh, there's not a whole lot of room for airflow, which is why heat is a major concern for laptops. No leaving the laptops on the bed because, you know, it, there's no room for the air to come. It's going to overheat, get very hot, and it can damage the insides of the laptop. But yeah, last but not least, most laptop parts are proprietary. Um, so the motherboard, the screen, is proprietary technology because the manufacturer, they, they're building the laptop. So that's built by the manufacturer. So you can have like an HP laptop and a Dell laptop. And you can't, you know, mix the motherboards. You can't mix the screens up. You can't like uninstall the screen on one and install on another. Man, that's illegal, guys. Without well, illegal, but you can't, <laughs> you can't do that. So as I said, portability. Laptops are designed to be portable. You can carry it around, look cool, whatever you want to do. Fortunately, 
Laptops are more expensive than desktops. Especially you want to buy these gaming laptops, you know, those laptops are going to be very expensive just because the parts tend to be more expensive than uh, desktop parts because they're smaller and they're proprietary components. So because of that, you're going to be paying a little extra when you buy a laptop. Unfortunately, laptops will underperform most desktops. You know, a gaming laptop, you know, is never going to match the top gaming desktop. And again, that's due to the size of the components and the restricted airflow of the laptop. Desktop computers have that expandability. You know, they could, we could upgrade a desktop easily. But laptops are going to be a little harder. You know, you have to unscrew the back. Depending on the laptop, you might have a hard time changing out some parts. And with that being said, some parts you can't change out. Uh, like the processor, for example, is almost always impossible to change on a laptop. And last but not least, laptops are built to be durable. Uh, since they are portable, you know, we carry them around. You know, it won't be good if you drop a $2,000 laptop one time and it breaks. You're always gonna have like a little motherboard. It has all the chipsets and you connect everything to it. That's always gonna be the backbone. But unlike desktops, Aka, a lot of components, almost all of them are integrated into the motherboard itself. So, you know, like the video and expansion cards, network ports, you can't do anything with that. You can't take it out, remove it. You can't change it for something faster. It's built into the motherboard itself. And that's because of how, you know, how small a laptop is. All right, laptop memory. So all programs executing in your operating system are going to, is being processed. I put processed by the RAM. Uh, it is being processed by RAM, but it's also being processed by the CPU, the processor. Sorry. Uh, but it's also going to the RAM, the random access memory. It's going to the RAM, and you're accessing it through the RAM. Uh, laptops do not use the same memory chips as desktops. So laptops use something called SODIM. Uh, you're going to have to remember this. You're going to have to remember this for the A-plus exam. Uh, SODIM stands for Small Outline Dual Inline Memory Module. Uh, so lap, uh, desktops is just DIM. Uh, when we get into memory, we will go deeper into that. But just remember that laptops use SODIM memory. And they're pretty much the same thing as RAM. They're just a little smaller. Uh, so the good thing with laptop RAM is it can generally be replaced again some manufacturers want to put it inside the motherboard for some reason and embed it uh, like you could have guessed sodims are a lot smaller than dims and sodims are available same as dims when we get into the memory uh, there's something called ddr ddr1 ddr2 3 4 i think it's up to five now so at the time of writing this course we have well we are at ddr5 so SODIMs go up to DDR5. All right, so we gotta talk about installing this memory. It's pretty easy, you know, depending on the laptop you have, since it's all proprietary. Okay, first thing, this is gonna stay the same. You wanna remove the battery and disconnect the laptop from power because you wanna live another day, you know? You, wanna, you don't wanna die fixing a computer or changing some RAM or anything like that. You don't want to get electrocuted and you don't want to shock the, the motherboard and destroy it. So it's best to just remove the battery, disconnect it from power. Then you're going to remove the bottom of the laptop. What you would do is you would open the bottom of the laptop. You'll have to unscrew the laptop. And then once you remove the bottom, you'll locate where the memory is. Uh, again, it will depend, and it's pretty easy to install. You uh, you pretty much just take it out. If there's already one in there, just pull it out. Generally, all you gotta do is take it out, and then get the new one, just slide it in. And once you hear that click, it might click, but you'll know when it goes in. Once it goes in, just put it in and lay it flat. It's super easy. All right, so now we're at laptop storage. So. 
Remember this, guys. Laptop storage is not the same as memory. It's not the same as RAM. So RAM, when you turn off the computer, it deletes everything in RAM. That's why when you have programs open, like Word, Firefox, whatever it is, when you turn off the computer and you turn it back on, those programs are gone. You have to open it again. That's because the programs get loaded into RAM, and that's how you're accessing it. So RAM is called volatile memory. Storage is non-volatile memory. We'll learn about that sooner or later, but just keep in mind that storage is not the same. So when you turn it off, you know, you turn off your computer, you turn it back on, your storage is still going to have all the data that's saved onto it. So that's the difference between the two guys. Definitely keep that in mind for the test. But yeah, so storage is used to save and load files onto the operating system. And like I said, storage keeps data when the power is off and RAM does not. So there's three types of storage you can choose from, guys. Let's start with the worst storage. The storage that I hate the most. The storage that gives me so much trouble in my IT career. And that is magnetic disks, HDDs. So the reason why I hate HDDs is because it has physical moving parts. So I'll probably put up a screenshot, but it pretty much looks like disks. If you're a gamer, I always say this because I'm a gamer, but if you, you know the disks we use to put into the Xbox and we play, it's similar to that. It looks kind of it looks kind of similar. It's just a disk, but the disks are always spinning. There's a read write head that reads data, writes data. Because of this, HDDs over time, uh, that's why my laptop doesn't work actually. HDDs over time, they get bad. Uh, they, they start not to work. They get very slow, very slow. Meaning my laptop that doesn't work was taking like five minutes to open Firefox, for example. Pretty bad. And that's why I hate HDDs because every time somebody's lap, laptop is slow or computer is slow, I always say, what do you have? Do you have a magnetic disk? Or uh, let me, well, I don't ask them. I just check. So I check if they have an HDD. And if they do, then I'm like, well, that's why. That's why your computer's slow. Each time you can fix it quickly by uh, swapping it out with a solid state drive. And we'll kind of go over that too. But let me show you guys something really quick here. So here I have, uh, this is Windows. I always type DFR GUI. And what it does is it opens this window here. And you can see media type, solid state drive. I recommend you try this on your computer and you can see if you have a HDD or solid state drive. You're going to need to know that for the exam. Just remember HDDs, slow, physical moving parts, super annoying. They can get loud. And yeah, you also have to remember for the test that for laptops, the size is 2.5 inches. And for desktops, the size is 3.5 inches. So keep that in mind for the test. You might get some questions on it. So the next one is solid state drive, SSD. The, the better one, this one is way better, guys. Way better. Like, you, you plug in the SSD, when you used to have HDD, your computer is going to be like the Flash Man. It's going to be fast, guys. Uh, so the reason why is because it does not have any physical moving parts. So there does not have to be a little read right head moving up and down reading all the data physically it's all flash memory and flash memory is super quick uh, most if not all SSDs are 2.5 inches so yeah keep that in mind for the test as well
And last but not least is M.2 drives. Uh, similar to SSDs is flash memory, but they're super small. Very, very small. They look like RAM. Uh, they're also very easy to install. So of course you want to remove your laptop, disconnect it from power, open up your laptop case by unscrewing it. Then you locate the old drive. So usually it has a screw that you have to just unscrew it. It's super tiny screw. You can see the little notch right here. You can see the little notch. That's where you put the screw. So all you do, you take out the old one. And you slide the new one in. Just slide it in. And it'll connect. And you lay it down. Yeah, super easy, guys. And then all you do is just screw the um, tiny little screw into that, to this little hole right here. And that's it. Super easy. Uh, SSDs uh, slash HDDs are a little more complex, but still not really that complicated. You just have to plug in some SATA connections. And we'll go over SATA connections as well. But, um, so pretty much the same thing. Just always remember to remove your laptop from uh, power, disconnect the battery, open up the case, locate your old HDD or SSD and remove it. So it's gonna be connected to two SATA connections. A SATA connection is kind of look like this. I put a screenshot up on the screen here, but there'll be two of them. There'll be one for power and one for data. Disconnect both of them. Connect your new SSD into those connections and then slide your SSD inside. If you have to screw anything in, go ahead and screw it in. But that simple guys. I'm telling you, when you open a laptop up for the first time, this will all, like me telling you this, it might seem a little complicated, but once you actually see inside of a laptop for yourself and you actually can do it physically yourself, it's gonna be really easy. So now we get to talk about migrating from an HDD to SSD, or you could just like do SSD to SSD, SSD to M.2, uh, pretty much, you know, you're just gonna migrate over from one drive to another. So you're replacing your old drive. So what you could do, you could copy the files manually. So you install an operating system on a new storage device. And then you, you know, plug it in to like, let's say SATA to USB. But pretty much you just copy all the files manually. You know, you go to your Windows File Explorer and just copy. That's, I feel like that's you could do that way, but I don't, I don't like that way. Uh, you could also move it to the cloud and then copy it over to your, to your desktop, to your new drive. Uh, that's kind of similar. It's still going to take a while. Um, these two are good. The first two are going to take a, a while, guys. It's going to take a good amount of time. Uh, I don't think this is on the test. Uh, it's just something that I wanted to bring up just so everybody was aware. But if you're using Windows OneDrive, you can easily just install a new operating system, sign in, then your files are gonna be there because you're, you're in OneDrive. Uh, one other thing is you can also use migration software to move the files and settings and all that stuff. Both, both drives will have to be accessible. Uh, pretty much the same thing. You connect a SATA to USB and then your laptop will detect the new drive and then you can launch the software and you pretty much just clone it so you say okay clone this drive to this drive it'll clone everything and once it's done take out the old drive put in the new drive and guess what everything's gonna be there it's gonna be like you didn't even switch drives Except if you're going from HDD to SSD or M.2, your laptop is going to be super fast. All right, so let's get into laptop batteries. So obviously, since laptops are portable, they need to be able to power on at any time. Just like any other device that's mobile, like a cell phone, anything like an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, stuff like that. It, needs, it has a battery, you know, because you're not plugging it in 
all the time. You can actually use a laptop without a battery, but have it plugged in. But I believe it's going to run a little slower, and I feel like that's kind of silly. But just, just wanted to bring that up. That's not on the test, but just wanted to let you know that it's possible. Uh, laptop batteries do come in various shapes and sizes. So as you can see on the screenshot here, this is the size of one battery. I don't know what kind of laptop this is. I think this is a Dell laptop. Dell or HP. You can see my uh, laptop battery <laughs> is this. Looks like this. Uh, they also come in various chemistries. So what I mean by that is it's pretty much just like what they're made of, essentially. So the main ones are nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, if I said that right, lithium ion and lithium polymer. Uh, the most popular ones are lithium ion and lithium polymer. Uh, we will get into that in the next slide. Uh, most batteries can easily be replaced. So as you can see in this screenshot, all you got to do is pop it out and it's done. So there's no installation. You just, you know, push a button or there's like a little notch here. I think this is the battery notch. You just move it to the side and then the the battery will just pop out. So this is the easiest way, but some, you know, some manufacturers, I don't know why they do this, but they like to put the battery inside. Uh, I'm not sure the reason for that, but if that's the case, you're going to have to unscrew your laptop and, you know, do all that stuff. Take out the battery. Uh, these batteries can last a few minutes to hours when unplugged. That will depend on how old the battery is, how many times you charged it. So the most popular ones, lithium ion and lithium uh, ion polymer. So the nickel batteries, they're prone to something called memory effect. Memory effect, a.k.a. lazy battery effect. That lazy ass battery. Get it out of here, man. That's why these are popular. We don't want the lazy batteries. <laughs> Such a weird name, but... Pretty much, it just means if you repeatedly recharge only after being partially discharged and not discharged fully, they lose their maximum capacity, which is super weird. I don't understand why that works that way, but lithium batteries, lithium ion and lithium ion polymer are not prone to that. So remember that for the test, nickel batteries... You know, they're prone to uh, memory effects. We don't like that. I always say I don't like nickels. It's just five cents. So I don't like nickels. I don't like nickel batteries. Lithium ion. Lithium. Every time I hear lithium, I know they're the better batteries. They're the most popular. So these batteries, their capacity, are, uh, their capacity is diminished after each charge. So, you know, like after a couple years, you're going to have to replace it. All right. So replacing the internal laptop batteries, pretty much the same thing. Disconnect it from power, remove the bottom cover of your laptop or wherever you have to remove. Find the battery and disconnect it from the motherboard. So you might have to unscrew it. If you do, it's not a big deal. Just unscrew it and then just, you know, take it out. Install the new battery. And then tighten the screws, uh, reconnect the bottom cover of your laptop. Easy. Easy, guys. All right, so we're going to get into laptop keyboards. So without laptop keyboards, we couldn't do all the fun things on our laptops that we do on our desktops, such as going to websites, you know, talking trash online, all that good stuff. We couldn't do any of that without laptop keyboards, guys. Now, laptop keyboards are different than desktop keyboards because of the size. So, for one, you will notice the keys are packed more tightly together. Uh, there also might be a lack of a number pad. And then there's also the FN key. So, if you don't know what the FN key is, the FN key is a little key on your laptop. I'll put a screenshot up. 
but it pretty much gives your laptop more functionality. So you can hold FN and type or well, press like F5, for example, to turn down the volume. You know, you, you have all kinds of cool functionalities with the FN key. So unfortunately, um, since the keyboard is integrated into a laptop, if keys go missing or keys stop working, you will either have to install a new laptop keyboard or replace the individual keys, depending on what the problem is. Uh, definitely be sure to check the manufacturer's documentation. That's going to be in the test a lot, guys. You might get questions asking what should you do first. So just as a practice question, if I were to say, you know, you have to you know, replace a key on your laptop, what should you do first? One of the answers is going to be look at the manufacturer's documentation. Keep an eye on those questions, guys. The manufacturer's documentation is very important. You don't want to skip looking at the documentation because since laptops, since laptops are, you know, fairly different from each other and they're made by the manufacturer, the manufacturer is going to have specific documentation for it. And you really want to read that. How do we replace individual keys? So as I mentioned earlier, check documentation. But generally what you want to do is remove the laptop from power, disconnect the battery, of course, get the correct tools. You might want tweezers as well as like a spray can to spray any dirt or debris from under. So just get the correct tools, whatever you need, remove the key cap from the key carriage you want to check the key carriage itself is not damaged because if the key carriage is damaged no key is going to fit on there even if you get a new key it's not going to fit so as long as everything is okay uh, you can remove debris from the key carriage and then you can insert or replace the key cap all right so wireless card good times guys because most laptops come with wireless already so you might not have to worry about this, but let's say you want Bluetooth, you know, then you might have to take a look at this. Wireless cards, uh, as you can see in the screenshot here, uh, that says WLAN, stands for Wireless LAN, Wireless Local Area Network. Pretty much you plug it in and you have access to wireless. You can connect wirelessly, you don't need wires. Most are already built into the system board. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you can add a mini PCI, mini PCI Express card to get extra function functionality. So, for example, if you want some faster performance, maybe, or like I said before, you're lacking Bluetooth and you want that Bluetooth, you can buy one of these cards, replace the old one. Uh, in newer laptops, these are kind of designed to be replaceable, so you can just open like a little hatch or something like that on the back of the laptop and just you know open it up take out the card replace it super easy guys you don't have to open the whole entire laptop cover or anything like that all right so biometrics there's not too much here uh, biometrics is already built into some laptops but you know some laptops have fingerprint readers stuff like that um, and these are often secure. You don't need a password because you generally, you can't, you know, fake who you are. You know, you set it up. It has to be you. It has to be your um, physical, your physical data. You know, your face, your, your fingerprints, stuff like that. Okay. Last but not least is near field communication, guys. NFC is used extensively in mobile payment systems it's used a lot like if you go to the store and you want to use apple pay you know click click on your phone you bring your phone close to the payment system Be-deep. that's it so that's nfc guys near field communication it kind of sounds like what it actually is because you have to be near the device as you can see in the screenshot you know you put your phone next to the payment system Boom, you make your payment. Uh, the maximum distance is about 10 centimeters. Uh, you could use a phone, a watch, uh, even debit credit cards. You can do 
to make the payments because the debit credit cards, you know, they have the uh, little chip on them nowadays. So you could use those to do NFC payments. Besides payments, these are also used for like, you know, you go into work and you scan a badge. That's NFC. Um, anything that's NFC, you can make a payment. You get access to somewhere. Yeah, guys. That's it for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, stick around for other videos in the course. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. Peace out, guys.